for being here today and welcome all of you to the 2012 May 1st rally. My name is Sheila Linton and I'm from Brattleboro and I'm a proud, proud volunteer of the Wyndham County Organizing Committee for the Vermont Workers Center. Put people first and health care is a human right.
I'm honored to be here with you on this day, May 1st, 2012, for the Vermont Put People First and Put the Planet First rally. Last year, many of you know that we could not have predicted Occupy Wall Street and that millions of people across our country would be taking to the streets to protest and protest the control of the super wealthy and their banks and corporations over everyone else's lives. The Vermont Workers' Center issued a statement last fall in solidarity with the Occupy Wall Street, and in it we said we would join in this struggle, and this is what we said. We will no longer fight against our neighbor over the crumbs that fall from the table upon which the corporations feast, because we recognize that it is the feast not the crumbs that belong to us. And there is plenty to share once we are all at the table. In recognition of solidarity, I want to invite you to say a chant. We are the 99%. We are the 99%. Repeat after me if you believe you are the 99%. We are the 99%. We are the 99%. We are the 99%. They can't hear you in there. The 99%. We are the 99%. We are the 99%. We are the 99%. We are the 99%. So I'd like to thank everyone who made this possible. Of course, we could have not pulled off an event without all of you, all our volunteers. So I want to give a list of those who have supported the work that we're doing here today. We all pulled together as sponsors, organizers, volunteers, people who organized. And all the presenters, the artists, the drivers who got people here with all the carpools from all over the state, especially Bennington County, whoop, whoop, Kim, and, and Northeast Kingdom. Thank you, everybody, for traveling as far as you did. Migrant Justice, 350 Vermont, Vermont Center for Independent Living, Green Mountain Self Advocates, I want to hear ya. Mobile Home Park Residents for Equality and Fair. Vermont Sierra Club, Rural Vermont, NOFA Vermont, Plant Parenthood Northern New England, Vermont Federations of Nurses and Health Professionals, Local 5221, Vermont State Colleges Faculty Federation, Local 3180, AFT, United Academics, AAUP, AFT. Vermont AFL-CIO, Vermont Interfaith Action, Green Mountain Central Label Council, AFL-CIO, Students Stand Up, Students for Peace and Global Justice, Occupy Central Vermont, Occupy Burlington, Nohegan Abenaki Tribe, Vermont Council, Peace and Justice Center, Burlington ISO, Vermont Progressive Party, the Vermont Interfaith Action, Sage Alliance, Vermont Yankee Decommissioning Alliance. Thank you. 
and decommissioning alliance. They stand united to shut down Vermont Yankee and defend Vermont's democratic process. That's what we're here today. SAGE confronts the Rogue Entity Corporation and its dangerous nuclear reactor with non-violent direct action. The Vermont Yankee Decommissioning Alliance, or otherwise known as VYDA, has been working to shut down the Safety Decommission and Vermont Yankee Nuclear Power Plant for the last 40 years. Write a quick postcard at the YVDA table for our messages from Vermont Campaign and help shut down Vermont Yankee. <laughs> Vermont IWW. <laughs> Vermont Citizens Action Network. <laughs> Citizens Awareness Network. <laughs> National Economic and Social Justice Social Rights Initiative. Yeah. Southern Vermont Undoing Racism. Yeah. And thank you to all of you volunteers, interns, committee groups, and hard workers from the Vermont Worker Center. We applaud each and every single one of you. Yeah. Now a little bit of logistical things. For everybody who's wondering, where do I use the bathroom? This is our state house. This is our bathroom. So you can feel free to, uh, to enter on either side of the state house. The bathrooms are on my right, on your left. Feel free to go in there and use the bathroom and get yourself some water or whatever you need. Feel free to talk to some representatives while you're in there as well. And we got Rutland Occupy, I don't want to forget. And anybody else I forgot, yell it out. And I'll yell it out. Anybody? All right, let me know. <laughs> so we're here today because we're building one movement for people and the planet. We are here because we envision another world and we believe we can lead the way in Vermont to make it a reality. I'm going to introduce our first speaker, and our first speaker I'd like to introduce is someone who knows firsthand of the crisis of our broken health care system, and who has been on the forefront lines of struggling to change it. Welcome Corey Decker, co-chair of the Healthcare is a Human Right Committee of the Vermont Federation for Nurses and Health Professionals. Climate activists, occupiers, people from all of our communities who are also struggling to access affordable quality health care. By creating a universal health care system, it means creating a policy that puts people first. The people united will never be defeated. The people united will never be defeated. The people united will never be defeated. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Corey. Let's give a round of applause for Corey and healthcare is a human right. Woo! Now I'd like to introduce our next speaker to tell us how we can take action today. Liz. Hi there, how y'all doing? My name is Liz Beatty Owens, and I'm a recent junior at Johnson State College. I'm 21 years old, and I'm more than $20,000 in debt and on the rise. In addition to going to school, I work two part-time jobs. We State College students are a hard-working bunch, and it is rare to find one that is not taking on two roles, college student and minimum wage worker. I'm here today because education, from early ed to higher ed, is a human right. I envision a Vermont in which everyone has access to quality higher education without the fear of being bound by the chains of endless debt. One in which we properly fund higher education, not just give a one-time appropriation. We need a people's budget in which all our needs are met, including our education needs. As a state college student, I'm also a proud member of the Vermont Workers' Center Put People First campaign. I am a part of a movement, and I'm asking you to join me. 
There's one very simple way you can join me right now. Look around the crowd, and nearby there's someone with a clipboard collecting signatures on these bright yellow postcards. This is a new postcard that we're collecting signatures on, and we'll deliver thousands of them on the first day of the legislative session of 2013. It unites our struggles and leaves room for you to get specific about the demands of your community. It reads, we call upon our elected representatives to satisfy the most fundamental obligation of government, to respect, protect, and fulfill the human rights of everyone in Vermont by doing the following. Create a universal, publicly, publicly financed health care system that satisfies the human rights principles incorporated into Act 48 so that every Vermont resident receives the care they need when they need it. Adopt a people's budget grounded in human rights principles with equitable spending and revenue policies that meets the fundamental needs of everyone in Vermont. Take all necessary action to design and implement real solutions to the climate crisis and ensure that everyone in Vermont has a healthy environment and a livable planet. Support the rights of workers to organize and bargain collectively and foster, to the, foster the development of an economy in which income and wealth are distributed fairly, an, eco an economy in which the majority do not suffer for the benefit of the rich. And my personal write-in, an affordable college education for all Vermonters. So join me in signing this postcard and let's stand together for our human rights. And now take a few more and ask others around you to sign them too. Thank you very much. farmers, workers, Abenakis, and revolutionaries. My name, as she said, is Luke Willard. I'm the chairman of the Vermont Commission on Native American Affairs. I'm a firefighter, I'm a rescuer, and a conservation uh, organizer for the Vermont Sierra Club and the Nolhegan Abenaki tribe. Up in the Northeast Kingdom, that's where I hail from. Yeah. Who, who, who's from the Northeast Kingdom? Good, 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 good. Good to be among friends. Uh, just over a year ago, I was here to, I just gotta throw this in. Just over a year ago, I was here to celebrate the state recognition of the uh, Nolhegan Abenaki tribe, which I'm a member, and the El Nu Abenaki tribes. It took 30 years, 30 plus years to get to that point. And I'm very happy to report that I will be here again six days from now to celebrate the state recognition of two more tribes, the Kohasek Abenaki and the Masiskoi Abenaki. Give it up, give it up, yeah. 
Now, as a as a conservation organizer, it's uh, it's 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 my job, it's my work, it's my duty to work at the grassroots level to encourage. Uh, communities to create their own town and tribal forests. This is a whole new concept that we've been developing over the last couple of years and I'm, I'm very excited about it. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a Vermont way, you know, it's completely independent. Vermont's always been very independent. This is an independent way of doing conservation. We call it the Our Forests, Our Future initiative, and we do not stand alone, folks. So I shout out to, to the Vermont Workers Center. I shout out to the AFL-CIO, 350 Vermont, and so many others. I shout out to all of you here today. Now, you might be wondering, what is Our Forest, Our Future? Well, my people, the Abenaki people, have known for centuries that the land we walk upon is a gift. And from that land, my people were able to meet their every need while maintaining the health and beauty of the land we call Ndakina in the Abenaki language. Today, most of us know as the Green Mountain State, Vermont. Unfortunately, though, this gift has been taken for granted. Greedy corporations, self-interested out-of-staters, and even some Vermonters who have traded in their, their own birthright for imaginary wealth and swollen bank accounts, they do not see the majestic mountains. They do not see the miles of forests. They do not see the medicinal herbs of spring that we see right now. They don't see the bounties of late summer and the colors of autumn. They do not hear the ripples of a mountain stream or the call of a loon or the wind as it dances with the leaves of a giant Vermont maple. They do not benefit from the, from the growing of organic vegetables or the blessing of a deer or moose who sacrifices itself to feed another, completing that circle of life. Those people, they only see potential development they see dollar signs, a place to put their pollution, and an investment in vacation home development for, uh, for the wealthy who reside in lands far south of these green and rugged hills that we love. These people, the adversaries of Vermont's working families, only hear what they want to hear. They only benefit from the gain of elitist, non-productive power, and they seek to, ex uh, to exchange that which could serve the community for the destruction that can only result from their own personal gain. These are the challenges that we all face as Vermonters, and today we declare we declare that a healthy and vibrant forest, a clean and sustainable environment, is, is a basic birthright of all Vermonters. Woo! You and me, all of us, our children, our grandchildren, not just now, not just today, but a hundred years from now. My people, the Abenaki people, also know that this planet is changing. Our climate is changing. We all know this. It's no big secret. But as we adapt to these changes, it is necessary for us to lend a hand to our four-legged friends, the animals, so that they may too adapt to our changing environment, environment by establishing forested migration corridors, particularly in the Northeast. So that, so that animals have a safe route from the spine of the Green Mountains to the vast forests in, uh, 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 in the northeast of Vermont, northern New Hampshire, Maine, and, and, and Quebec. But let us not forget the two-legged creatures, you and me, moms, dads, grandmothers, grandfathers, and our greatest resource, our greatest, greatest resource, our children. In exchange for... That's right. In exchange for our stewardship, yours and mine, town forests and tribal forests can provide and will provide clean air to breathe and clean water to drink. They can also provide essential food and medicines that haven't been poisoned by synthetic fertilizers, hormones, genetically modified organisms. They can provide firewood for the disadvantaged, cooperative maple sugaring, this is Vermont, folks. 
um, and a place to teach our children the simplicity, the absolute simplicity of sustainable living and stewardship. Now last year, last year over 1,500 people signed our petition for the creation of new town forests. These petitions were delivered to the governor. I was here for it. Many of you were here for it. And also to leaders of the Vermont General Assembly. We are pleased to report that this year, the governor is supporting increased funding for the Vermont Housing and Conservation Fund. This year though, this year though, we are circulating a new petition and I'm going to be coming around to all of you and asking for signatures on this. This year we're circulating a new petition, one that will demonstrate Vermont's overwhelming support for tribal forests. It is our intention this summer to deliver this petition to the governor and to work with his administration to secure the first true and new for Abenaki forest in over 200 years. Now let me tell you something, after 400 years of oppression, genocide, eugenics, and, the, and, and literally the near eradication of our culture and our people, it is now time that the first Vermonters, the original Vermonters, the Abenaki, win back a meaningful piece of what was once all ours. So we demand tribal, communal, uh, tribal communal lands that we can hunt on, that we can fish on, where we can gather wood and medicine. We demand a return of those tools of nature which were stolen from us generations ago. We do not stand before you today asking uh, that we again be made wards of the state. My fellow Vermonters, we ask and we stand before you today to demand that we be allowed the resources to not only safeguard our environment, but also to take care of our own people. We here today declare that the time has come, the time has come to establish Abenaki tribal forests in the great state of Vermont. Yes. Now let me be as clear as I can. We do not seek acceptance or recognition from a federal government which is marred in blood, war, imperialism both abroad and at home, corruption, inaction and failure. We do not seek rights to gambling or other vices. We're simply seeking to work with the state of Vermont in setting aside lands which which we can preserve, preserve and conserve in its natural state and work according to our traditions. Those which predate 1492 and 1791. We simply seek a place in these green hills that we can once again call our own. And here we are not alone. We have been working with the Vermont Sierra Club, of which I work for the Vermont Sierra Club. I'm with them. I'm with them. I'm with all of you. Uh, we've been working with the, with the Vermont Sierra Club and others represented in this crowd today to achieve these goals. We understand that our battle will only be won through a grand and united popular front composed of all those individuals and organizations who are gathered here today in solidarity. And in turn, in turn, in turn, the Nohegan Abenaki people will fight for you. We'll fight for you and we'll work with you to see that Vermont puts people and the planet first. And that's a promise. So now as the sun goes down over this failed empire of greed, we, the Abenaki people, the people of the dawn, reach out our hand and our arms and friendship to all Vermonters, everybody here today, be they the sons and daughters of the Green Mountain Boys, the descendants of Abenaki and, and, and Native American people, the grandchildren of the Quebecois immigrants, or, 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 and even more 
more recent arrivals. Together we are Vermont strong and together we will win. Now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wrap it up, but I, I gotta tell you this, because this is another promise. When I step down from this podium, I will have one goal, one goal, and that is to collect each and every one of your signatures, showing your solidarity and support for tribal forests and preserving our environment and all those, all those, all those, all those who inhabit it. So I ask you, support the Nolhegan Abenaki tribe. Support the Vermont Sierra Club. Support tribal and town forests. Support our forests. Support our future. Freedom and unity! Thank you. Get ready to sign my petition. If there is no struggle, there is no progress. Those who profess to favor freedom and yet depreciate are men who want crops without plowing up the ground. They want rain without thunder and lightning. They want the ocean without the awful roar of its many waters. This struggle may be a moral one, or it may be a physical one, or it may be both a moral and physical one. But it must, it must be a struggle. Power concedes nothing without demand. It never did, and it never will. These are words from Frederick Douglass. I'm using these words. You may not remember me as much, but I, I, I remember him back in Wyndham County as a little girl. And what I'd like to say is that most of you, I think, know Bernie. Let me hear you if you know Bernie. Woo! Great. So we don't usually invite politicians to speak at our events, but Bernie Sanders, our senator, is an exception because we believe he is in the struggle with us. How many of you believe he's in the struggle with us? He's a part of the people's movement for human rights and democracy. As far as long as I've been here in Vermont, I've known him to do that. We are proud to work with him so Vermont can lead the way, not only in establishing a universal health care system, but in building a movement to put people first and put the planet first in this country. Thank you for standing up for us in Washington, Bernie, and for standing up with us now. Let's give a warm welcome, warm applause for putting people first, Senator Bernie Sanders. Sheila, thank you very much for that introduction, and thank you all very much for being here today. What this effort today is about, what the Workers' Center and all of you are doing, is the most important thing that we can do in America today, and that is grassroots organizing, bringing people from all segments of life together to make it very clear that America belongs to all of us and not just the billionaires and corporations. So thank you very much for being here. Now I don't have to tell anybody here what you already know. And that is that today this country faces enormously difficult problems. Unemployment, too high, wages too low, we have a middle class which is collapsing. And in the middle of all that, obscenely, you have the wealthiest people in this country doing phenomenally well. You have a situation where almost all of the new income created in America goes to the top 1%. And what we are saying today is that that is not what America is about. We do not want to continue having the dubious distinction of having the most unequal distribution of wealth and income of any major country on earth. 
We need to pass real tax reform and make sure that all people in this country can live in dignity and with justice. Furthermore, we do not want to see the continuation of a disastrous Citizens United Supreme Court decisions. So let me be very clear, corporations are not people and they should not be able to elect the politicians of their choice. And when we talk about what's going on in this country, we should all be ashamed that we have by far the highest rate of childhood poverty of any major country on earth. And I am very proud to be here supporting our child care workers who want a union, who want to stand with the children of our state and make sure that our kids get quality child care and child care workers earn a living wage. Many of us have worked for a long time to bring fundamental reform to our dysfunctional health care system. We know as Americans, as Vermonters, that it is not acceptable that 50 million people today have no health insurance and that 45,000 fellow Americans are going to die because they don't get to a doctor when they should. And right now in that building behind me, that beautiful building, we have the opportunity to lead the nation in a new direction in terms of health care. And with the support of the governor and all of you, Vermont will become the first state to make sure that health care is a right and not a privilege and that we pass a single-payer health care guaranteeing health care to all of our people. And brothers and sisters, when we do that, believe me, other states will follow us and thank Vermont for its leadership. And today I am very happy to be here with my friend Bill McKibben of the Free350.org organization. And what Bill has been saying for years, and many of you fully understand, is that it is a moral disgrace that America is not leading the world in cutting back on carbon emissions and helping to reverse global warming. And when we begin to do that, and when Vermont plays a national leadership role in doing that, we are going to create a huge number of good paying jobs in energy efficiency, in wind, solar, geothermal, biomass, and in leading this country in reversing global warming. And when I go back to Washington on Monday, the issue that's going to be on the table and is always on the table is deficit reduction. I just want to say a few words. All of you understand how we got into the deficit situation today. And that has a lot to do with two wars in Iraq and Afghanistan that President Bush and our Republican friends forgot to pay for. It has a lot to do with huge tax breaks for the rich that were not paid for. It has a lot to do with lack of revenue coming into the federal government because of this Wall Street caused recession caused by the greed and recklessness and illegal behavior on Wall Street. Now what our Republican friends are saying is, yeah, we have a huge national debt, we have a deficit, and the way we want to balance the budget is by cutting Social Security, cutting Medicare, cutting Medicaid, cutting education. 
We are not going to allow them to do that. If you want deficit reduction, let's ask the millionaires and billionaires to start paying their fair share of taxes. If you want deficit reduction, let's take a hard look at our military spending and end the absurdity of America spending more on defense than the rest of the world combined. So we can move toward deficit reduction, and we should, but not on the backs of the elderly, the children, the sick, or the poor. Last point that I want to make is that among many other terrible things that are taking place in this country is the war against women. And women understand what's going on. But it is terribly important that at this key moment, men stand with women and make sure that we do not lose the gains that women have struggled for for the last 50 years. So I just want to say to all of you, this is a great, great event. And the way that we bring about change in this country is when millions of people in Vermont and across the country at the grassroots level stand up loud and clear and make sure that government understands that America belongs to all of us and not just the people on top. Thank you all very, very much. except North Korea, and you need to know that people are standing in solidarity uh, all over those places, people who have felt the same sting of climate change that we felt when Irene came through, people who are dealing with drought and flood, and all around the world the message is the same. Our problem is the power of the fossil fuel industry. The fossil fuel industry is the 1% of the 1%, and they've been able to impose their power on this planet, and they are on the verge of wrecking this planet, and we are not going to let them do it. 
Now, I, I got to speak at nine or ten Occupy encampments around the continent last fall, and it, it feels to me like this is the spirit of Occupy back out after a winter hibernation, ready to go to work. And some of that's happening in the State House behind us in the next couple of days. We very much need the State Senate tomorrow to take up this bill that puts a big renewable portfolio standard together and moves Vermont quickly, not slowly, toward job-rich renewable energy. And we very much need the State House to follow up on the work the State Senate has already done. Tomorrow, they could make Vermont the first state in the union to ban fracking. And that would be a remarkable thing, and that would give great heart to our brothers and sisters in Pennsylvania and Ohio and all the other places that are fighting hard against this scourge. <laughs> There's so much going on. Around the world this weekend, there'll be thousands of rallies with people who have suffered the effects of climate change. We're calling it connect the dots because that's exactly what we have to do. We have to make people see this pattern. And of course, in Vermont, we'll be in Waitsfield because that mad river, that was one of the many places where people took such a hit. Nothing reminds us of the trouble we're in together, like the fact that we all have to live under this same atmosphere, this same sky, with this same weather. And it is now starting to go so crazy for so many people, so many of whom have done absolutely nothing to cause this problem. They live in places where to us or to them, we look like the 1%, you know. And so we have to come together in this kind of solidarity, stand for this most basic of human rights. Vermont is the place where this global climate movement began, and we are so glad that it's now coming together with all the other movements for human freedom and human progress. None of them can prosper without the others in conjunction and connection. It is a beautiful, beautiful day to get to see you all out there and just say thank you so, so much. God bless you all.